When Egyptians revolted against President Hosni Mubarak in 2011, the spark was external. It came from Tunisia, where the Arab Spring movement began before spreading across North Africa. This recent unrest, back-to-back -back Fridays of scattered demonstrations, was also triggered from the outside, from Spain, but by an Egyptian insider. <laughs> Muhammad Ali is a wealthy contractor now living in Barcelona. His family grew rich through building contracts involving the Egyptian military. He's also a part-time film and television actor. When he started going online on September 2nd, he had political stories to tell, tales of corruption at the very top, and the acting skills to tell them. Muhammad Ali is the guy that you sit down with at the cafe and have a hookah with on a Thursday night in Egypt. Everybody understands him, they feel him, he connects. Everyone knows that there is massive systematic corruption and much of it has been linked to the control of the army of the economy. And Ali laid out in very clear terms, by names, by numbers, by dates. And the very fact that he also came out and said that he himself was corrupt gave him even more credibility. And that paved the way for the kind of uh, viral takeoff of, uh, of his videos. He claims that he was contacted by the army to build a palace for CC uh, in a few months. And according to Ali, that cost us 250 million Egyptian pounds. Uh, so these sort of allegations are very detailed, very tangible. Um, and given his position within this transaction, it sounded credible and it really shocked uh, the public. 12 days after the first of Muhammad Ali's videos went online, knowing that millions of Egyptians were watching them, President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi responded. On Ali's stories of lavish presidential spending in a country where more than 30% of citizens now live below the poverty line, Sisi had this to say. <laughs> The president's public response served as a cue for Egyptian television channels, which had done their state-controlled best to ignore the Ali videos, to finally confront them. Muhammad Ali is the most difficult for me, and he started to be a mess and a mess and a mess. They have actually been in this weird situation where they are claiming that protesters are uh, terrorists or supported by the Muslim Brotherhood. It's very important for 100 million عندك وحضراء واحنا عارفين كلنا ان عندنا تنظيم ارهابي خاين but at the same time they're also denying that there are actually protests in Egypt ناس في التحرير بنتكلم على 30 40 واحد اتلموا لمدة دقيقتين هتفوا هتفين اتصوروا وبعتوا الفيديو it's kind of a weird hypocrisy, but this leaves many Egyptians unable to, uh, to see what's happening with protests, which is why many people talk to social media, for example, to see the protests. Like Ahmed Musa, who's a traditional mainstream pundit, he actually um, interviewed Ali's father, Abdul Khaliq, who is a national weightlifting champion, who himself discredited his son. <laughs> So there's that kind of usual kind of textbook um, attempts by the media to delegitimize the protests and to de defame whoever is trying to lead that movement. But even that didn't work. And so the next step was for talking heads to come on and say, don't listen to him, because if you come into the street, we will know. <laughs> Egyptian media over the past two years has become solely owned by the intelligence services. Now, when the intelligence services control much of Egyptian media, it becomes an extension of the arm of the president. Many of the foreign media outlets covering this story are beyond the control of the Sisi government. Al Jazeera is based in Qatar. Al Jazeera Arabic, its pan-Arab news channel, and Al Jazeera Mubashir, which focuses on live news events, have both given the story heavy play. 
El Shark is an Egyptian channel located in Istanbul. It too is providing the kind of coverage domestic Egyptian channels simply cannot. The authorities in Cairo have periodically blocked access to other channels and platforms, including BBC Arabic and Facebook Messenger. And the SIS, the government body that accredits foreign journalists, issued them with a warning on September 22nd that the government was, quote, carefully monitoring, unquote, coverage, reminding those reporters to abide by what it called professional standards. It was pretty much a warning to journalists that if they continue to critically cover uh, certain topics or certain issues, they might be kicked outside of Egypt, for example. And uh, it follows really their policy of trying to uh, restrict coverage by uh, international media operating in Egypt. Many television channels, Al Jazeera being a prime example, Al Shar and, uh, and, and others, um, have been painted with the same brush. Some of the work by these channels has been professional. Some of the work has left some room for criticism. But as has happened in the past, during critical existential moments, Al Jazeera, because of its financial resources, is able to provide video that many others within the government sphere will not provide. So many do lean upon that. When Al Jazeera covers the story, it periodically reminds viewers that dozens of reporters remain in Egyptian jails, including the network's own Mahmoud Hussein, imprisoned for more than a thousand days now, yet to be charged with a crime. For all of the official efforts to control the political narrative, the Egyptian authorities cannot stop news from happening. What Muhammad Ali began from Barcelona has been followed up by Egyptians posting their own videos, and many of them appear to be military personnel. That and some other developments Egyptians saw last year suggest that what is unfolding is not a popular uprising, but the first signs of what could be a soft coup. Elements within the military, who were once loyal to the former general turned president, now preparing to depose him. Now what these videos are showing is that there might be growing fissures from within the military establishment. Now if we think about the last presidential election in Egypt of last year, most of those that sat to challenge President Sisi were former military men. They would not have run for office if they didn't think there was internal support. And Muhammad Ali has been saying, it's not the military that's corrupt, there's actually good people. It's Sisi's mismanagement of military for his own benefit is what the problem is. And that that is Sisi's number one concern. It is not as simple as a dictator gone rogue and a people rising to tell him leave. There are forces clearly within the Egyptian deep state that are looking to finalize the solution. Right now, we are in a wait and see. I've spoken to many people on the ground, and the indications are that the very same people who three weeks ago were saying don't jump in the fray. This is a battle between generals. Are now saying, whoa, time out. This arrogance cannot be allowed to stand. Hundreds have been arrested. The regime is sending out messages that they're looking for a fight. And I believe that the people will give it to them.